Good morning. You're welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, it's a beautiful Monday morning, right? And today we'll have a lot in store for you. One of the topics we'll be having on today's show is Sarah Poon's 36 governors and Wiki to account. Wiki, who is the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, to account for FAC trillions. Another is Labour presents seven demands, including state and local police creation. Well, those are some hot topics that we'll be having this morning. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. Okay, this one says, hold on to your dreams of a better life and stay committed to striving to realize it. So hold on to your dreams of a better life and stay committed to striving to realize it. And that is by Earl G. Graves Sr. He was an African-American entrepreneur and author. Now he says this morning, hold on to your dreams of a better life and stay committed to striving to realize it. Now, and this is, you know, it's just right there. You can tell what LG Graves is saying this morning. So if you want that better life, well, you have to hold on to your dreams. Do not allow your dreams to be dashed. Make sure that you're still holding on to those dreams. Make sure you're still having those lofty ideas. Make sure that you are still creating those creative juices. Allow them to flow. So hold on to those dreams and then do not stop striving for them. You need to be able to actualize those dreams. And what do you do? You have to put in the work. So when you put in the work, well, you might just realize those dreams. So you need to keep pushing, keep you know, breaking those boundaries for you to realize them, to hold on to your dreams. And it's Mindset Monday this morning. And that's the reason why we're giving you this quote. So hold on to, hold on to those dreams. I know you might have a lot of plans for the week. Well, the month is about to wrap up, but at least um, for the month of April, all of the dreams, everything that you want to achieve, well, hold on to them and stop putting in the work. The truth is that if you do not put in the work, well, you might not get anywhere. But if you put in the work, the chances of you realizing that are endless. So what are you doing this morning? Are you making sure that you're putting in the work? Are you striving to realize those dreams, those dreams of yours? Do not, you know, for any reason, just put them into the back burner and say, you know what, I'm tired. I've been striving for the longest time. Sometimes it's when you're about to get there that it seems tiring because you're breakthrough is just right at the corner so no do not give up this morning make sure that you are still striving for those dreams and make sure that you're still putting in the work to realize them all right that's it for our top trending story um once again welcome to the breakfast is monday the 22nd of april my name is Romain. i'm here to serve you a very good breakfast this morning and our first top trending story says ndlea arrest three kingpins intercept drug shipments bound for oman now the ndlea in a statement signed by spokesperson well, Femi Baba Femi on Sunday said the suspects were arrested after over two months they were declared wanted. The agency noted that a total of 51.90 kilograms of heroin have been recovered from members of the drug cartel in an operation that began 10th February 2024 at the Sakoi in Port Shed of the airport's cargo terminal. The NDLEA said that the consignment was concealed in 15 cartons of 2,300 watt metal cutting machines with no less than 45 blocks of the illicit substance weighing 49.70 kg recovered from the equipment while additional 2.2 kg was seized at the syndicate's warehouse in Ayobo area of a Lagos state. The agency added that while it secured interim feature court order on hotel, mansions, vehicles and funds traced to members of the syndicate, after arresting four of them, a manhunt was also launched for others who went underground. The effort, however, paid off on Friday, 19th April, when two of the wanted kingpins, Onyechi Irene Igbokuta and Franklin Uzochuku, were arrested in Lagos and Oka, and Anambra State, respectively. Another wanted member of the syndicate, Osita Emmanuel Obina, was equally nabbed in Lagos, the agency said. In the same vein, the NDLEA said the attempt by a suspect, Ieka, if I in Chuku Festus, to export a drug consignment through the Terminal 2 of the Lagos Airport to Muscat, Oman, via Ethiopian airline on well, flight on Thursday, 18th of April, was thwarted by its officers. It narrated that when his luggage was searched, 
20 big parcels of cannabis weighing 9.80 kg were discovered concealed in his bag. Well, this is quite a, a hefty one, if I can say that. I know we've always talked about the fact that there is a drug problem in Nigeria. And um, it just breaks my heart that we're seeing people go into, you know, illegal things. Now, obviously, having to export um, heroin, cannabis, um, whatever it is, is illegal because Nigeria has never um, legalized those type of substances. But here you're seeing um, people still try to import or export it or even sell it. Now, I'm happy that the NDLA is, you know, just nabbing these people one after another because if we're saying we need to um, work on the drug problem in Nigeria, then we need to make sure that we're taking these people out, phasing them out um, of the streets because obviously they're selling them sometimes even to underage kids who have no idea how much these substances can affect their lives. Now, I understand that sometimes Nigeria that can be difficult because, I mean, what are the job opportunities that you have? What are, um, what are the things that are placed in front of you for you to be able to make money? Sometimes you really do not have a lot and you see people, you know, going to crime because of unemployment, um, because of the high standard of living, um, because of all of these things. But still, I don't think it's enough reason for you to go into crime now you might say oh i'm justified because i just have to put food on my table um regardless of how it comes but no it cannot be like that you still need to make an honest living selling drugs or exporting drugs is not one of those honest livings so in as much as the government is might not give you the job that you think you need you see that strength that energy that you're putting into running a syndicate of um drug of a drug cartel why don't you put that energy into something else why don't you put that energy into tech why don't you put that energy into a business why don't you put that energy into just something else that would yield you know profitable um opportunities for you and people around you and at least it is legal so um with the ndla making sure that they've been able to nab these people it is a great and wonderful news and i just hope that one after another they start to um take them off because we just want a clean nigeria we want a nigeria whereby you know criminality is is at a is at a minimum let's just put it that way so kudos to the ndla i'm glad that you know you guys are doing your job and making sure that i mean nigeria is working nigeria is getting better all right so we'll move over to another top trending story this one says chess master tunde onakoya breaks world record um Onakoya broke the Guinness World Record for the longest chess marathon on Saturday um, after playing for over 58 hours undefeated. At the marathon that took place at the New York Times Square, Onakoya exceeded the record set by Norwegian players Halvard Hogg, Flatable, and Sujo Frankstand in 2018. Onakoya embarked on his marathon session hoping to raise $1 million for underprivileged children education in Africa through the record attempt. The 29-year-old played chess for 60 hours from Wednesday, April 17, to 20, surpassing the current chess marathon record of 56 hours, 9 minutes, and 37 seconds. He played against Sean Martinez, an American chess champion, in line with Guinness World Record guidelines that any attempt to break the world record must be made by two players who would play continuously for the entire duration. Reacting to Onakoya's achievement, Nigerian President Bola Tinubu in a statement said, setting a new world record, well, a new world chess record, and sounding the gong of Nigerians' resilience, self-belief, and ingenuity, you have shown a streak customary among Nigerians' youth population, the audacity to make good change happen, even from corners of disadvantage. This is such an amazing story. Now, um, I mean, I've been following Tunde's journey for over a year. And I mean, I was able to watch, you know, him play well on his live, um, on his Instagram live. And it was just beautiful to see 
um, a Nigerian doing so much. In fact, news outlets in America were carrying it and saying, you know, there is a Nigerian man on the streets um, on New York Times Square playing chess um, in an attempt to break the world record. And now, well, Tundi has done it. 60 hours is no feat. And we are super proud of him. It's lovely to hear um, Nigerians just breaking boundaries. Nigerians, according to the president, sounding the gong, um, you know, in every part of the world. Now, the cause is even something that is more wholesome. Um, Tunde has like a um, chess for slums, um, you know, organization whereby they take kids out of the slums and they teach them how to play chess and send them to school. And so that was the reason why he was even, you know, trying to raise a million dollars for underprivileged kids in Africa. So he's trying to move across maybe just, not just Nigeria, but, you know, Africa at large, because there are a lot of kids that are out of school. And it's so beautiful to see someone, a young man like this, you know, have a heart um, to be able to help kids. And that is so, so beautiful. And we applaud him. We commend him. Um, we hope that the Guinness World Record comes quickly. And yes, he is the new world record champion. Oh, fingers crossed. All right, congratulations to Tunde once again. Um, we wish him the very best on all of his endeavors. And now to our final top trending story. This one says EFCC resumes clampdown on Binance and other crypto platforms amid Naira devaluation. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has continued its crackdown on Binance and other cryptocurrency platforms amid the recent marginal surge of the dollar against the Naira in the foreign exchange market. The spokesperson for the EFCC, Daily Oyewale, confirmed the crackdown. He said that the commission was doing everything lawful to ensure sanity within the country's forex market. The commission is doing everything within the ambit of the law to ensure that there's sanity in the Nigerian foreign exchange market, he said. Meanwhile, some foreign exchange market analysts have stated that the dollar rose slightly against the Naira between Wednesday and Friday due to interbank moves of the commercial banks. Now, I know last week I'd even talked about the fact that the dollar was gaining strength rapidly. And one question I asked was, what are we doing that we were not doing before? How come we're seeing this um, rapid rise of the Naira against the dollar? And, you know, there's been questions, is this a scam? Is this just something that you put on paper? You know, just for us to feel like, yes, something is going on. Meanwhile, nothing is going on. Well, good that something is going on. But as we can see now, um, from Wednesday till Friday, we've seen um, a rise of the dollar, well, a slight rise of the dollar. And now with the CBN trying to, and the EFCC, you know, trying to have a crackdown on um, Binance and other cryptocurrency um, trading platforms, we just hope that, you know, those are one of the measures that they're using to ensure that the Naira gains strength and uh, they're not just witch hunting people and just moving and saying, oh, because this is happening, then we have to um, look into you and try to short you down. So we hope that these are, you know, the policies and whatever policies that they've put in place, I mean, kudos to them, because if we can see the Naira go, um, if, if we can see the dollar go to 1,900 um, Naira and then see it come back to about a thousand one hundred a thousand two hundred in some cases a thousand naira i mean like i mean kudos to to the the cbn kudos to the nigerian government you guys are doing amazingly well but my question is what are you doing about the prices of goods and services in the country because when things go up in nigeria there is almost a 99 percent chance that it never comes down so we've seen you know the dollar um you know just come down in bids the naira has gained strength but the prices of goods and services still remain the same and even some cases it is still getting inflated so what are we doing about that um what regulatory body is supposed to be to uh, is supposed to be there to ensure that you know people are paying for value and they're not just you know having to pay exorbitant prices in the guise of oh the dollar you know went up for a bit so I mean, if, you know, these are measures once again with Binance and all of the cryptocurrency um, platforms, if this, uh, if this is one of the measures to ensure that, you know, the Naira gains more stability and more strength than by all means, because definitely we want to, and we want to be able to, you know, afford the basic necessities of life. We want to be able to have a good standard of, standard of living. And that would just be great if um, the CBN, the EFCC, the Nigerian governments, you know, 
all of the agencies do what is necessary for the people of Nigeria just to alleviate the sufferings of Nigerians at the moment. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be taking global stories making headlines in our national dailies. Please stay with us.